Hello. It's just me all by myself, but I have some people coming. Well, anyway, Virginia's in the shop and she will be here soon. And I think I talked the blacksmith into coming, but first I'm gonna type some links for you while you check out the really cool mountain behind me. Uh, we are in at vikingvalley.no on Instagram and Facebook. YouTube too, well, actually. Viking Valley in Gudvangen, Norway. Uh, I am at Karen Hume. I have needle binding patterns. I don't. I have a few videos, but not so many how-to videos because somebody's really good at it. New luck and tot. So I don't want to recreate the wheel. Uh, Virginia will be here in a bit. Um, is Virginia on YouTube and Instagram. And then today the blacksmith is going to come. His name is Anders. I guess and I think I wrote that right. We still have a few, um, still we have a few tourists in the village. So then we just tell them that we're a social media Viking. Now let's see, Anders the blacksmith on Instagram. Ta-da! Oh, I can write on the website I was talking about that has really good needle writing patterns. Or websites, um, instructional videos. They want the English version. That is a really nice site for how-to videos. So here I am in beautiful Gudvangen, Viking Valley. It's sitting on a very unstable rock. So I'm sorry if it keeps waving. Maybe we'll just be crooked. So now I seem to be talking to myself, so I'm missing the pop-out chat. I will find it. There are people talking to me. Yay. Right where you are from while I catch up so you guys can introduce yourselves to each other. Da, 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 da. Just talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Location. I like Saturday Night Live. All right. Uh, the opening photograph. You like it. Okay. So that is, there's a story behind the opening photograph. Uh, it's our sheep, uh, but that one is mostly the uh, white sheep. It used to be gray, so his name is Grotus, which means the gray one. He's now mostly white and a little bit of brown on his face. Uh, so we washed the wool, I washed the wool, I dried the wool, I combed the wool, and then I spun the wool, and now I'm plying it together, and that's what the skein is in the middle. Uh, but if you see those nice little pretty little swirls in the uh, basket where they um, that are unwoven, the roving swirls, beautiful things, Julie Miners did that. She came to visit the Viking village with her mother. I see someone! And, she, and I sat her down and made her spin all my stuff for me, or do all my carding for me. So notice he's not wearing a sweater. What up? <laughs> This is Anders. Say hello. Hello. Can you tell him who you are? I am a human He's experience. A blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> no, not be weird on video. Okay. I am a blacksmith and uh, I am <laughs> <laughs> making stuff out of what? iron. So basically, you are going to keep me entertained until, or everyone actually entertained until Virginia shows up. So this is all her fault if it's uncomfortable for you. <laughs> no, but um, what do you do? How long have you been in the village? I have been here for two years. Is it two? I thought it was three. No, it's just two years. Time seems so much longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been here <clears throat> two years. Yeah. And, um, I'm basically making everything that the village needs for uh, uh, from iron. Mm -hmm. So if a leather worker needs a pair of pliers, for example, or... <clears throat> someone needs a uh, chisel mm -hmm. for woodworking or 
or something knife like that. For a knife cooking. for cooking. Example, uh, I make that as well. An axe for throwing. An axe for throwing. I fix. Uh, I do maintenance as well, so I fix all the iron objects that might be rusty or uh, out of order in the village as well. And you add a lot of drama to the town because it goes bang, 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 bang. I do actually. It's quite yeah. cool, actually. It would be yeah. really we notice when you're not here. Yeah. Don't do that. Stay. No. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yep. So, so, so you've probably been here the longest of quite a few people, actually. I think so. Yeah. 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 Because we started up in, in 2017 and you jumped on board the first full year, 2018. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And then um, I had a million questions for you. Oh, the sweater. Let's start with the not historically accurate sweater. Yep. <laughs> Why do you want a not historically accurate sweater? <laughs> uh, to piss people off, basically. So I just want to... I'm a rebel. <laughs> a rebel with a cause. <laughs> Without a clue. <laughs> no, no it's... I'm, um, I want it because, well, uh, to explain the, the smithy, to, to start with that, uh, the forge here is not historically accurate. Uh, we did that on purpose because we, in order to have a blacksmith here all year round, we, mm. needed, uh, we needed to function as an operational blacksmith shop. We needed to be uh able to handle big workloads uh for that you need some modern equipment uh we use air fans and we have uh welding machines for bigger uh commissions for example mm. so um and i'm i'm being honest about it so it's it's not like i'm trying to fool anyone into thinking that oh i'm a viking working as a viking blacksmith i am uh, forging in the old way uh, during the day, but I mm -hmm. do have big anvils and I do have some things that they wouldn't have in the Viking age, like a 90 kilo anvil. It's highly unlikely that uh, anyone would have, Yeah. even though they have shown records of uh, renting out anvils in the medieval period, early medieval yeah. period, uh, of almost the same size and weight as those. Uh, I don't remember where I have that from, but uh, that's... Uh, I'm not going to fact check you. No, I don't remember where it's from, no. but I, I usually I fact check it when I find information like that. And now uh, I don't remember where. <laughs> hmm. So, but you don't want to freeze in the winter. And um, I am also pretty much yeah. the same. If you think about it during the day, I can work on the yarn saw in the opening picture yeah. and make a hat with it and everything with all the old techniques. but. These big stitches are not exactly historically accurate. Neither is the sweater I'm making and supposedly making in the evenings. I'm not yeah. done yet, by the way. It's the reason I want uh, personally to want, that I want actually a needle bound sweater, null bounded or whatever it's called. Null bound, yeah. Yeah. It's because um, cool. when, when I'm working in the smithy, I will be working there in the winter. Mm. Uh, I will be working with the window open. If the town is open, yeah. I will be working with the window open. I need something that's padding. Uh, underneath my tunic, our uh, uh, our houses don't if have there glass. Is, if it burns a hole in my sweater, uh, it's gonna be, it's not gonna unravel completely. No. So it's very practical with needle bound, and uh, and it's it, not synthetic; it's wool, so it doesn't burn very well. You know, there there's a there's a thing that's uh, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's like if you get people to do you favors, right? This is a pro tip for everybody. It's like if you get people to do you favors. Mm -hmm. The more favors they do to you, the more attached they will feel. I can't so, believe them. Hello, Karen. <laughs> do you like me? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to keep myself off of you. <laughs> so, uh, He's like tip, a brother. Pro tip there. <laughs> pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Look me in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, anyway. So, um, no. But yeah, we do a lot of favors for each other, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want me to make a kitchen knife for you? You're making I'm me a kitchen knife. That, so. Uh, you can show it here later at some point. When yeah. I'm done with it. No pressure, but if I could get that when I finish the sweater, yeah. we'll be right. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> so you got some time. I will be owing you a little bit more than that, probably. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I'll, I will call. One day I will need a favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shall call upon you, and you must not question. <laughs> No questions. No, no questions. But we do have some, actually. Da, 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 da. Here I see one here. What does Anders uh, like to make the most or the best? And what are there any projects for the village that you are especially proud of? <gasps> That's a good question. Yeah. What do you um, like to make the most? Start with that one. Yeah. I like uh, my favorite thing to make is swords. 
that that is uh, the coolest thing to make several different types of swords i've only make, made viking swords so far uh but it's difficult to to do it because you need to keep uh, at the tongue straight in the mouth as we say in norwegian <laughs> so uh but i like to make knives and i like to make <laughs> swords that's basically what i like the most swords difficult cool. thing to make yeah. is actually intricate designs uh, on for example big uh, doors uh so for example what is it called uh like you have some some iron fittings for example on notre dame uh which oh, yeah. is only one blacksmith an artisan blacksmith in the modern age has been able to replicate any of that work because it's so complicated mm. so uh that's very difficult that sounds like that fun project you did for the village yeah the gates of nyarderheimer yeah. was and it uh, wasn't just like one gate it was 16 parts yeah. it was four four big gates total uh with 16 parts total each each door open you know those chinese um there are the folding kind of a goes this way this way this way this way french doors yeah i think we call them french doors anyway yeah so each gate and there are four gate four four parts to each four, gate four gates four gates total so 16 <laughs> Has parts four parts total. yeah yeah so yeah. and then you didn't just kind of throw some iron together you decorated them yeah mm -hmm. i uh, made some leaves and uh, i used both modern and old fashioned techniques so i used uh, old fashioned techniques to forge the leaves for example themselves and uh, to uh, i welded them in place with modern equipment mm -hmm. so and then, uh, uh, what was the second question that was the one thing you're most proud of that you made for the village Probably the gates. I yeah. think the gates would I think be a big one. Are, they were long-term projects that mm -hmm. took me three months to make. So and you also have the was it the Vyvesor symbol through the ages. Yeah, the uh, Aegis Yelmer. Aegis Yelmer. Uh, I, I chose to do this in a modern way, and I was using modern equipment as, and all that. Um, there, uh, there was a little bit of a storm there because uh, people reacted to me making the Aegis Yelmer, which is like. Uh, 16th century yeah. Icelandic uh, occult symbol uh, but I like it because um, there has been found some uh, petroglyphs from Sweden that are almost identical to it in shape so mm -hmm. I chose to use those petroglyphs as the base model for the Bronze Age and then I moved on from the Bronze Age to the Viking Age and then yeah. I chose to put uh, distance between in the Renaissance and then the modern age was the the name Njardarheimer in the runes. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, I didn't even realize that. It was a project that yeah. covered kind of those four ages, and I thought I thought it was uh, kind of cool. It was like an internal art, yeah. artistic kind so of. So I thing. think the reason there was a little bit of a thing around it is because people would see the newest one and think you were going to represent the village with something yeah, from the 16th century. Yeah, they saw the 16th century one. They didn't and, see the history. Uh, no, they didn't yeah. see the whole thing because I put when i was finished with one of them i put them out on instagram or whatever yeah <laughs> so it was a little bit of a storm it's and hard a to be a social there. media viking yeah so. um how'd you learn your craft anders viking school for iron men that's from charlotte yeah yeah uh <laughs> I, I learned uh, my craft as uh, i was an apprentice in uh viking not in the viking village i was not actually i was an apprentice in um in my uh close to my hometown uh, so there's an axe smithy that has been running for uh, 80 years, I think, from 1896 to 1986. I don't, I'm not good at math. Maybe that's more. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You don't need math to be no, an no. iron no, Yeah, right. So there was a blacksmith shop there, and I liked making knives. Hi, Virginia. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, they got them hard questions. Yeah. Oh, I like it. So I was making knives a couple of years before that, and... At some point, I was a little bit tired of not being able to make my own knives from scratch. So I wanted to learn that, uh, and I needed a blacksmith shop to do that. And mm. I sought one out, and they were you skeptical, gotta... as blacksmiths are. So they were like, oh, what do you know about blacksmithing already? Yeah. And I'm like going on and on about heat treating and how do you... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> how do you... How far do you heat it up? What temperature... How do you cool it down? What do you cool it down with? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I went into this, into this really elaborate description of how do you heat treat things. And they yeah. were like, hmm, he, he can be useful to us, maybe. <laughs> so I got in there and stayed there for yeah. a year and uh, spent as much time as I could forging. 
And while I was doing that, uh, the opportunity for a job up here appeared. So you got sucked into the mountains like the rest of us, into the valley. Yeah. See, if you, if you do favors for people, they stick to yeah. you. <laughs> well, wait till you rewind. Okay. <laughs> you just proved his theory. <laughs> and then, um, oh, I was going to ask you a question and I forgot all about it, but we'll let someone else do that then. Um, close up of Anders, beautiful metal clasp button. All righty then. They don't want to see your face, they just want to see your button. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is it a symbol? Or is it you just something you thought looked kind of cool? I don't remember where I got it from. I bought it. Yes. Uh, I bought it from Connor. Connor oh, Connor Adel. Sweeney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from oh, yeah. Valhalla Silver. Yeah, Valhalla Silver. We're yeah. going to have to type that one. So I'm not sure. If he, if he, can, he can probably answer. Yeah. Where it's from. <laughs> probably. Know. Yeah, this just, just right, Colin. Who's going to say? Connor. Sorry. Connor, yeah. Connor and Alpha. I don't know if it's. All whole silver space, whatever, but you can figure it out. Yeah. They're from Ireland, Northern Ireland, isn't it? Ireland. Okay. Is the tunic dyed, Anders? Oh, I know who's asking that question, too. Oh. Guess. Guess who's asking if the tunic is dyed? It must be Batman. Kristen. Ah. Textile Batman. hexa. <laughs> well, my, this is my not tunic the dyed is one. bought from some salesman. Because remember, I'm Man. a blacksmith, not a clothing person of some sort. <laughs> if only so I, have you have no idea. I have no idea how much work went into the sweater. Uh, I apparently have understood how much work it will be going On into it. Yeah, but you're watching me make the sweater did, or not making the sweater. Them? Did you tell them? Like, that I, we've, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Carl did the math as to how much it would <laughs> cost. So I figure if I'm really nice Thank and generous, you, I will say it'll take two months to make. Maybe two months if I didn't do anything else and did that. The sweater, including the plant dyeing. Carl gets out his Viking calculator. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty thousand kroner. Yeah, it was kroner, wasn't so, it? So yeah. um, thank you, Karen. <laughs> you're very generous. It's so not done yet. <laughs> it serves my purpose because now you're <laughs> like even more <laughs> big, bigger favor for me. So basically, he's not saying thank you for making it. Say like, please finish the damn thing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, Mona, her rice, yeah, Mona did have to go. She's in there somewhere. Yeah, is she online? We haven't looked at all the. Yep, Mona's here. Hello, everyone. Miss you all. And Anders, the best, bla best blacksmith, missed time to meditate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I do that. <laughs> he can actually levitate. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite cool. Uh, let's see. Up in the beginning, do, 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 do. oh, somebody writes, finally, hello in advance, it was Charlotte, she made it, Julie Johnson is here, uh, Andrea from Duluth is here, Regina is here, Susan Youngman, always on tour, hello everybody, greetings from hello, Germany, hello, hello. beautiful yarn in the picture, Robin, uh, Heidi Lisa, hello, she's only saying hi to me though because you guys weren't here yet, move faster. <laughs> <laughs> Runa's sister Why? Heidi. What? What? Runa's sister Heidi says hello to Karen. Oh, okay. But that's because you guys weren't here yet. I'm slow. Uh, and Textile Hexa, uh, that took a struggle. Hello, my dear. Oh, oh. She's giving me crap. Notice the house we're kind of sitting outside of. <laughs> that's where Kristen lives sometimes. Um, or rather, you're dressed. Oh, that's right. I am wearing a Kristen creation on twice. Mm -hmm. I can figure out how to get up. Watch out for my big ass on the computer. Okay. This is Kristen. This is Kristen. These are mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. I like it when she outgrows clothing and my big butt fits in them. Okay. Uh, Dora was here. Hello. Um, Susan Youngman, Julie Johnson, so beautiful wool. Yeah, on the front, I put the cover of the wool. Uh, that I made uh, Julie Miners and her mother sit there and card for me, or comb. We can't card that well, it's too long. Mm. Arlene Cross says, Good morning. Textile Hexa says, Hello from, uh, to Anders. We already covered that one. Heidi, other Heidi is here. Hi, Sharda Karen, Anders, Savnadera Massa. I'm assuming she misses you too, but you just weren't here yet. <laughs> we miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We asked that question. Uh, so the cat on the Viking Valley Instagram post, were cats important in keeping the rat population down in 700 AD? As far as I know, the cats were very important for pulling Freya's chariot. Yeah. Also for uh, skinning them and getting fur. 
Ooh. So the real ones actually didn't have such a good ending. He is hiding though, I see. He's Wouldn't up there in the hill somewhere. Wouldn't like angry or something about that? <laughs> oh, there's well, some slang some words in there. Really like that, <laughs> well, liking, I think. well, Tour also has goats and I'm pretty sure that they <laughs> had goats for eating as well. Yeah. Odin had a couple of ravens and then he ripped out his eye. Yeah. Yeah. You know. The things you do for your pets. And Thor <laughs> killed the, his goat whenever he was hungry. And then as long as the bones were gathered together, it will just resurrect. <laughs> oh, that's true. So maybe it was <laughs> like that with the cats too. <laughs> it's for the cats. Yeah. yeah. I don't know any but other mention like of it cats. except for that. We, like we do goats. like the cats. We like ravens too. Why not? And those are my I kids' cats. So then, uh, but neither, I mean, they're both mutts. I like that somebody that, oh, is that a Maine Coon? And then Tufa replies in Norwegian. No, it's a backyard uh, breed. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard backyard breed, but I am so using that. <laughs> uh, let's see. We are up here. Do, 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 do. Ann Decker's here. Hello, Ann Decker. Ann Decker, we have a question for you. Earlier we were talking about if you used metal to make a needle. Have they actually found any metal needle binding needles? We don't even know if they're actually meant for needle binding. Tell me. Have they found <laughs> metal needles? They have metal needles. <laughs> yes, they have. And which metal? Well, and then uh, that's iron the thing needles is, have been found from the Vikings. Is we yeah. don't know if we they don't know what they're for. for needle binding or not. No. I like that when they ask for it could be for fishing nets, it could be for sewing. However, since we have, I don't know, a blacksmith here, um, now we have no historical evidence of this whatsoever without Anne telling us otherwise. Uh, if you were to make a sewing needle, which metals would you use for sturdiness so they didn't break? Or well, there are, there are different alternatives. Iron is a good, uh, good um, mm. metal for yeah. sturdiness. Yep. So it will, uh, you could use steel, but I don't know if they would. Uh, mm. Iron is strong enough, but if it's a very thin needle, it's going to bend anyway. Yeah. So steel would be a good option for a very thin needle, like they are today. Yeah. So steel, both steel and iron were available. Uh, also, you have bronze needles, or rather, Copper alloy is what the term that they usually use for yeah. uh, those because it's impossible or difficult or they don't wanna or something. Uh, check if uh, uh, if it is actually brass or bronze. Brass is made from uh, copper and zinc, and uh, bronze yeah. is made from copper and tin. Ah, okay. It, both of them were available, but uh, they use copper alloy because it's probably too much work to try to filter everything up. They, they look almost the same, and in all intents and purposes, they are almost the same. Would if, they... you strike, uh, if you strike yeah. a needle, if you make a needle, if you, uh, what's it called? Not mold it, but uh, the, into Form? the mold. Uh, you cast oh, yeah. it. If you cast, cast a needle out of uh, copper alloy, yeah. you can strike it uh, to strengthen it. It mm -hmm. will harden by striking it. Oh. Uh, so uh, it's it and it works the opposite way of steel because mm -hmm. if you uh, heat up a needle made of steel and you plunge it into water, yeah, it will harden. If you do the same with a copper alloy needle, mm -hmm. it will soften. Ah, oh. actually, so you need to strike it and then it will it. harden. So it's so a it's an option with a struck or worked needle out of copper alloy. On the same lines of that, your pin, for example, because I've seen we've got uh, fibulas, and some of them are copper and some of them are iron, but they can't handle all the same strengthness in a coat, for example, if it's like really thick wool versus really thin linen. Some of them seem like the the part that's behind here anyway, the metal part, the needle type shape yeah. would be very bendy. But uh, would that be the same? Because like copper and bronze, they're pretty soft. That you can make them copper and uh, yeah, well, copper is very soft. Yeah. So copper alloy, uh, like bronze or brass, uh, yep. it would work. I have a copper pan that used to be round. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> it used to be round. <laughs> yeah. Copper is soft, soft metal. So. Yeah. I haven't you have worked to too it much with there? pure copper, but uh, it is yeah. a soft, soft. It metal. is a soft one, that yeah. yeah. And then. Uh, I saw somebody made a needle, and Jan Eriksson has one that's made out of silver. How is that practical to use? Is it uh, is that something that would like bend in your hand? A needle? 
yeah. a needle, she, a silver it, needle. Somebody actually cast a silver needle about this big anyway, and I thought, oh, I would love to. She got it in I trade. I believe you could do the same thing with silver, actually. If you yeah. strike it, it was it silver, yeah? yeah? Yeah. To a certain extent, of course. So I'm thinking bronze needles, those must bend like <clears throat> mad. Yeah. Yeah. Until you strike them. Until you then, strike them. Then they are hardened. They're hardened to a certain extent as well. So ah. I think they will become brittle if you strike them too much. So it's. Uh, so you can have a little bit of anger, but not too much. <laughs> just, just the right <laughs> amount of rage. Well, let's be honest. A silver needle, it doesn't matter if you can use it or not. It's cool anyway. Yeah. As long so as I, cool I will rock that. No, I oh, might yeah. still want the, to do The problem that, that you uh, come across when you're making these things is yeah. uh, actually uh, the hole is so yeah. tiny. It needs to be so tiny that. When I tried to make, uh, I have made a couple of needles out of iron, and it's so tiny that you need a special chisel. So I see when I search the database for mm. uh, historical needles from the Viking Age made of iron. Oh, you did homework before you yeah, came yeah. here today. Yeah. I don't even do that. Uh, I see that the holes are round, usually, yeah. not oblong. Mm -hmm. Is it oblong? Oblong. Oblong, yeah, like yeah. this one. Oblong, yeah. They're not like that. They're usually round, as I can see. Dark, but yeah. I have only done a minuscule amount of research on this, so yeah. I don't really know exactly. Yeah, because you have you so um, so busy making knives that you don't make needles. Yeah. Although I have to say I love knives, so <laughs> I can blame. <laughs> what if the knife was needle sharp or razor sharp? It could be like, or the needle was knife sharp. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Then you have leather needles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're like well, little knives. They did definitely have files in the Viking Age. Yeah. Because all all you need to do to make a file is so you need to uh, anneal it, which means that you soften it up, basically. I'm yeah. not going to go into the technical details on that, but if you soften up the steel, yeah. you can actually chisel out grooves into it, and then you can harden it again, and it will be a file. Ah. It's mm. easy to make a file. Because I I found out in some thick wool, I really like. You want one? Leather needle. For, we uh, have we have a, we <laughs> have something going on. We might need to. We uh, we have plans. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think they're gonna happen anytime soon, but they might. Happen. Maybe if I finish the sweater, we will <laughs> have some more demands. And Decker says she has bronze needles that are very nice to use, although she uses it more for doing hair taping than braid for braids. Mm. That I kind of get because this one I usually don't needle bind with it. I usually just do hair with it. Braiding hair. I actually do that too, but right now it's kind of hard to braid from a meter's distance. I could do hers that way though. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't be able to grab it at the end. We'll just use tongs or something. You just yeah. throw your hair oh, this way. Only braid throw these parts. <laughs> Six feet back. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you, you will finish <laughs> soon. <laughs> uh, oh, I think we have some more. They found, uh, Ann Decker said also that they found metal needles, um, whether they were used for null binding or for some usage is unknown. Uh, they have copper ones, including rolled copper needles. Oh, yeah, like those uh, stick pins, I think. Yeah, bronze needles agreed that the actual percentage of alloyed materials. Uh, I think there are iron ones as well, but I'm less familiar with those, mostly because I haven't tracked needles as closely. Um, we had just one question for you, Anne. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that, yeah, no, she came up with a whole crap load of information and she didn't even have a chance to look it up. She's on the last section of the second sock, by the way, the back and forth section of the ankle split. Ooh. She's make, That means I have to finish the damn sweater soon. My if God, she finishes those God, socks Karen. before I finish the and sweater. what are you <laughs> working on? You're not working on the sweater. Kelly, one, two. <laughs> there it is. We found it. <laughs> Every time I ask you, are you done with the sweater yet? She's just, she's just, Puts it aside and then starts on the half. <laughs> I, I can't even tell use me. the. I, I usually like to say, "Andres, gonna do what you tell me." I need your body. <laughs> <laughs> I need your body. But unfortunately, Andres, I haven't needed your body in a week, and I I had your body and I used your body and then I gave it back to you, and I still the haven't done anything experience. with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Full Viking experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have any more questions for Honors while he's here? Otherwise, Virginia and I are just going to torture him mercilessly because it's fun. I'm going it's to meditate here. soon. You're going to meditate. So anything you do to me levitate. will be meditated away. Levitate. No. <laughs> you could levitate. Oops, sorry. This is not a very stable rock that this is on. Actually, no, you guys are just drunk. <laughs> no. uh, I think I might have skipped a few questions, but yes, actually, uh, Kristen Textile Hexa did dye a tunic for you. Yes. Because blacksmiths tend to get sooty. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you found a way to save the color. Yeah, there's a, I had a gray tunic and uh, I wanted a little bit of color in it. So I, I uh, was able to, um, I, was, I was allowed to, uh, yeah. to use the rest of what she has dyed in before. Let's see if I can fix the wiggle. It works fine. It uh, turned uh, reddish, I believe, reddish, brownish. Purpley. I'm, I'm colorblind, so I don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't it's know. pink. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like a well, like actually, a maroon it purpley. Was pink. Yeah, it was pink. It was because of the silver underneath it or something that kind of brought actually. it up. No, it was quite cool. So it got some color. It got it's it got I color. Yeah, it has a new life. Yeah, new lease on life. Uh, let's see. Chu, let's see. We asked that. We asked that. Buenos dias, Virginia. That's when she came in. Hola. Uh, Christine is here. Hello. Uh, uh, let's see, I read that. The thumb has arrived. The thumb! <laughs> Regina the wrote. Thumb. Julie Johnson. Oh, we got weather. You just have to look through there. Uh, Arnstein is here as well. Ah, do you remember Arnstein and Inga? From, um, they haven't they have come this year because it's a corona summer. I'm really bad at names. Oh, you know who they are. Faces, I will remember them. You will remember anyway. I, so he says really hello. Yeah. He and Inga are watching while making tacos. That is not very Viking yes, appropriate. We don't ask much, but tacos. a little bit of accuracy. I want tacos now. I want tacos what too. What is a taco anyway? <laughs> we have tacos. We don't know. It's uh, another, I don't know. What's up? 900 years until it's invented, maybe. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is why it's so wonderful to be a Viking now. <laughs> because you can eat tacos. <laughs> you can eat tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a spinning wheel has arrived. So yes, it's yes. Gonna, it's behind closed doors. Yeah. Good and to be a Viking in this age because it's uh, now you can eat tacos and you, die, you, know, you don't die from everything. No. Waiting around the corner to kill you. <laughs> Carbon you're, monoxide, you're, you're pandemic, you can, corona times. You break your arm, you can yeah. die from infection. Oh, it's but like, wait, the corona is killing people. We do have a pandemic killing people. Uh, yeah. Wild animals, enemies. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. Enemies. The blood of my enemies. Kayakers. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> jet skiers. Average age. Yes. Mm, 12 meters were found in Lufu and said he's on tour. Oh, ah, I did not know that. Oh, check that out. Uh, Julie Johnson said she see, saw one metal needle found by Time Team Britain. Mm. Uh -huh. um, did they go up too fast? Cats have a limited of nine resurrections, or maybe it's eight. Ah, yeah. The goats have unlimited, though. Oh, they are do. Yeah, yeah. yeah the cats can only. Yeah, okay. In, yeah. in Spain, they we say that they have seven lives. So oh, really, they have less yeah. less lives in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go for an American breed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe not for needle binding. They were saying as well the, uh, the, about the 12 needles found in Lufuten. No, there's no way to know. I mean, because it could be made for fishing nets and you could use them for needle binding. They could be used for sewing and you could. Well, the idiot would use a sewing needle for needle binding. Well, actually, two idiots, Anne and Virginia, are the only <laughs> ones who would use sewing needles to. Oh my God, you guys are insane. Did I show you my needles? Mm -hmm. Do we need to my needles that's not a pole that's my needle <laughs> okay we're gonna need Can a different background there there we go oh there it is there it is there it is <laughs> size does matter <laughs> uh, so yeah uh bronze or copper is impossible for making shoes oh uh he wrote more um Let's see. My bronze needles is only for showing them to tourists. Bronze oh, or copper is impossible. Because it through the leather. Oh, yeah. I would think so. Yeah. So it's kind of a bit like um, the hand spun wool and the one that you saw in the picture that is only for showing tourists. Hmm. Holy crap, though. One hand takes two weeks to make just to from washing it to spinning it. to. It's a great hat, though. I've made three. I'm now making bags, although I decided to try the... Oh, I put it behind the thing. Tried the Osla stitch, and it went from this big to being this big, so I'm going to have to rethink that stitch. Uh, Arlene Cross says she has a mammoth ivory needle, very smooth. Nice. That would be cool. That would be so cool. I, I would mean, like to see that. Yes. Uh, and is, it's her favorite to work with, she said. Uh, how often did Viking women wash their hair? You want to smell? At least once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Because Saturday. Dog is a washing Saturday. Day. Yes. Both and, men and women, as, as I suppose. And our French tour guide says, which is more than the men do today in France. <laughs> 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 it's a joke. No, I'm sure that maybe. I don't know. I've never been to France, so I have no idea. I'm going to leave you all. You're going to leave us? I'm You're going to so levitate? Sorry, but I have to. Any last words? Mm. 
We love to see. Well, no, you're not. You are wearing the pouch. We need to see the pouch. Okay. Notice That's he's nice not wearing leather all. pants. We can't confuse it. Show the pouch on your way Live out. Live long and prosper. Show the pouch <laughs> on the way out. There you go. We work it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> now wave goodbye. <laughs> he, he wiggled his way out. <laughs> he wiggled his way out. Okay. Thanks for coming, Anders. It's much more fun when you're here. I was boring the crap out of them before. Uh, and Eckers. Uh, oh, yeah, they're talking about their needles to each other. Okay. Uh, Heidi, Horton Heidi. Uh, Taco Friday here as well, still in Santa Fjord with her cousin, leaving for tomorrow for a long day of train with her three children. And, of course, she misses you, too. Oh. Uh, well, she's not bored. Uh, we were just trying to tempt us, says Arnstein. You have definitely tempted us with the tacos. Oh, yeah. I think we're getting tacos after this. <laughs> I, I was going to have seafood yesterday, but my kid uh, interrupted my order <laughs> and uh, by making jokes about toast. And then the message didn't quite get across that I ordered something. So I waited 45 minutes. My food didn't arrive. I'm trying to be patient because no. we know the manager, obviously. We know the owner. And we're like, uh, and I'm like, well, no. He said, did you want to order dessert? And I'm like, no, I'm still kind of waiting for my food to arrive. And he said, you didn't order any food. And I said, no, I did. But my kid was making such a ruckus about toast and such. I think it got lost in translation. And oh, I don't no. blame him one bit. So I had creme brulee for dinner. Oh, God. No. Yep, yep, yep. So I could have to do seafood today, too. <laughs> I might have to. Uh, your needles are gargantuan. I like that word. Beautiful, though. Suzanne, thank you. Gargantuan. Huge, huge. Shake that never, pouch, wrote Robin. <laughs> ne never heard that one before. No, gargantuan is like, there's a gargantuan spider. Uh -huh. So we have a little bit of a corona update. Um, I don't think we're letting people in the country anymore. Or how's well, that working? No, no we're letting them in, some, but they have some, to. Some countries, yeah. They have to quarantine. I think they can still come in. They just have to quarantine for 10 days. Now. Yeah, depend, yeah, depending on the country, you, have, you can come, but you need to quarantine for 14 days. Yep. Yeah, we've gone up in numbers a little bit, uh, which has us in the increasing rate. So, um, but there's, I think we had yeah, the other ferry boat, for example, had an issue. And then there was a group of students partying. And also, our slow is on lockdown. What? There was, a, yeah, this whole thing called yeah, Father Yeah, I heard Rukka. you saying it, but yeah. what's going on in Oslo? Well, I think there was a gathering of at least 100, uh, don't quote me on this one because it could be wrong, but I think there was a gathering of like 150 students at least in one area and then others. It's something called Father Week, mm -hmm. uh, Father Week or um, the heck is Father, like a grandfather, but not necessarily a grandfather. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so they have that week anyway, and I'm not sure what that exactly means in terms of schooling, but somebody out there does. But they were partying. Hmm. Not quite responsibly, apparently, though. Uh, they are making it, I think, now so that the alcohol cannot be served after midnight anymore yeah. uh, in an attempt to be a little bit more responsible. That sounds reasonable. But due to those couple incidents anyway, and maybe because we had more, you know, Schengen was open, the um, mm. EU-affiliated mm. areas were open. So maybe that's why that we have a little bit, we have an increase. It's not an alarming, but it's enough for them to say, do not travel to Oslo in the Oslo area. Mm. So, because of this, um, means I have a different situation at home. My kids will go back to school, but the father is not able to go to work in Oslo and has to work from home. So, I will be here the next two Fridays. Mm -hmm. So, we can keep this time, 6 o'clock, the next two Fridays. Mm -hmm. Come and play with us. We won't change the time just yet. Just yet. <laughs> no, not just yet. A mm -hmm. little bit longer anyway. Uh, but they're still allowed to go they're just not allowed to, I don't think you're just not allowed to do any extra traveling within the Oslo area, etc. Mm -hmm. so, if I remember right. Uh, Charlotte said she was going to ask about the corona. How are you, dears, now? Well, we're not sick. But I guess face masks might become mandatory in Norway, in parts of Norway, probably Oslo. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still have the tourists have to still wear them here when they are doing activities. Auntie back is now coming back in fashion yeah. again, like with a passion. We are going to start drinking. No, don't drink. It, but I think we're going to have to start making a no, our own face mask. Soon. Yeah, making version one. Hmm. I think we. I think, I think my a, mom is making some for me. Really? Actually, yeah. if we order the right materials and then we could have them printed up or something with some seriously weird Viking logo or. Yeah, no. Fenris. I, I think she told me because obviously she's back in Spain, so she's making masks for everybody. Oh, good. And, uh, I like your mom. Yeah. And she uh, she told me, oh, do you want one? I'm like, yeah, why not? I mean, in the end, I'm going to need one, so why not? <laughs> when you say in the end, 
That sounds so final. Well, in the end, it I was mean, nice <laughs> I mean, that at some point I'm gonna need it for sure because this is how the world <laughs> is gonna go now from now on. Apparently, yeah, no, we're gonna need one at some point. But I think that's, uh, I think that's where we're headed anyway as a country, Norway. Mm -hmm. But whether it's all of Norway or just certain parts, mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously not nearly as populated here as they are in Oslo. Mm -hmm. We have 55 people, not mm -hmm. including the tourists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, Maria made it. Woohoo, made it this time all the way from Sweden. Are you in Sweden? Are you insane, woman? What? All the way from Sweden, but she might be in the part of Sweden they're allowed to go to. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna let you off. Uh, Virginia's leather thimble. How's that going? Oh, good. Good, good. This yeah. is one of the three that I made for, show that my, um, for my YouTube video. You did a video on that. It's yeah. one of your first videos. So if you look up in the scroll there, you'll see Versama. Yay. On YouTube, it's hard to make this thing sit stable. Oh, we got new equipment. We got new equipment uh, in Gudvagen, and we are allowed to borrow it. So maybe next ah, yes. time we can film with these mountains coming in much more clear, instead of having them disappear into the background and be so contrasty. Tried to get it set up for this, but it is for a different system than mine. You're so, gonna be able to see us in um, in living color. <laughs> Wait, we're in color. Damn it! <laughs> I don't know. Maybe better quality. I guess we'll be popping out. We'll be in your laps before yeah. you know. It. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. How you doing? <laughs> uh, imagine that. How you creepy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I can't do that as well as you can. It's, uh, it's a special superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Your scissors are amazing too. Oh. By the way, Julie is the same admirer in both of those. The Viking scissors. I don't have to do like that. Maybe they're, yeah. Yeah, I think they're super cool. They open too. Yeah. And they close again. We have those, I think, even a yeah. li little bit smaller or a little bit no, bigger. These, no, these ones are, are big from ones, the yeah. shop here, actually. So oh, yeah, that's right. We sell those for I like. I got them from here. Like 195 kroner or something, then that's not too yeah, bad. Yeah, no, 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 they're not very They're expensive. not that bad at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it was 159. I might have dyslexic there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't and know, I know I we can't had remember, a... to be honest, I bought them so long ago. And then there's the other ones that are like uh, shears. Yeah. Sheep uh, sheep shears anyway, but those yeah. ones are and straight And I have enough. bigger, this part being bigger and this part smaller. So like normal, a oh, normal yeah. pair of scissors as well. For fabric? Yeah. Because you don't want them to, yeah, you want them to be straight for fabric. Um, see, do, do, do. Robin got got myself masks today. If I need to take the bus, or even worse, shopping, <gasps> shopping. It's online time. We are putting our stuff online. Yes. The web shop is coming yes, up. We are. It is um, it is getting put up almost immediately because with the way the numbers are kind of starting to increase again as far as um, infected people. We want to get this done in a hurry. So soon you will be able to buy things online. And this is including both things we normally have in the shop mm -hmm. and handmade things. Yeah. This will be fun. So I'm very excited about that web shot. Wee! Charlotte yeah, is happy. That I am excited. I'm excited about that. Yeah. So that means some of the stuff that you see on your Instagram, for example, or mine, you can buy them yeah. through the shop. Because yeah. I'm, uh, I'm too lazy to try to sell them on my own. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, she's in the south part, said Maria Hill. Good, good. Yeah, in the south part of Sweden. <laughs> and uh, Andrea from IJAM and Sweatpants, the Duluth one, sings, In the end, it doesn't even matter. We put that ah, song in her head. Yes. This song you recognize? Yes, of course. <laughs> in the end, it, it doesn't, doesn't even matter. matter. So I am um, I'm doing a wool project. Yes. I did bring this because cool, I haven't cool. been needle biting lately, but we're trying to find things to make and put in the store. I have the leftover wool that is too small to spin. So I felted it. Well, it, it can spin it, but it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm not, not going to do it. Not going to do it. So I carded it and I felted it. And now I got Runa to draw me a Viking ship. Yay. So it is getting needle felted. I can't see. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can. It's needle felted, but it's not done yet. Uh, there's one shield that's got a little bit of red on there. I... I think I've changed my mind about putting the red in it. I think I like it more in the natural sheep colors. But Runa drew the boat. Yeah. 
I'm just coloring cool. in the line. I did add waves though, but I'll put some more in there. It shows up more than I thought. Now that I see it on the camera, though, the oh, waves. Oh yeah, no, no, it's very. I don't think cool. you could see that. Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cool. So that was fun. So this is um, we have a crap load of wool uh, here. So it's well, we had some donated, and we have of course from our own sheep, and I've only used one third of each of the sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, probably more of Grotos than Spartan. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, so I thought we have to kind of focus on that. So we are, since we're going into crafting season. Yes, 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 yes. 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 I think I, I kind of have to say that crafting season never ends. No, it just, there are certain times where you wish you had time to craft, more time to craft. And then there's times where you wish you could be doing something else other than crafting. <laughs> because there's no thing else something to do. Something else other than crafting. Never. Yeah, you're right. That was stupid. Never. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. I no, lost myself for a minute there. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's kind of nice, though, to be... To, I'm looking forward to having more time to craft. That's uh, sure. Yeah, a bit more time catching up on uh, Instagram, etc. Maybe not taking a week to answer people on Facebook. <laughs> I don't even have a Facebook page. It's just the only one I have is my personal one. So if you've sent a friend request and I've ignored it, it's because my kids are on there. But uh, almost everything is in social anyway. But did you know on Facebook you can follow someone? I didn't know. Yes, yeah, so you, you can follow them on Facebook. So you can actually get all their updates that they do publicly hmm. without having to be friended to get access to the private things. Like when my kids went to the bathroom for the first time on a I toilet. See. I see. Not everybody needs to know that. I see. see. So there you go. Anyway, so you can follow on there. But uh, Instagram, that one I have is is public and yours is public too yeah and your youtube yes but she does you have to tell them more about your youtube because it's been a while since we really talked about your youtube project it's different than mine well yeah well my what i try to do on on youtube on my channel is basically all of my crafting projects crazy ideas uh yes and sometimes combined crafting projects slash mm -hmm. crazy ideas <laughs> um, like crazy yeah i i post it and i share it. it it doesn't necessarily need to be a how to sometimes i post how to do something but uh most of the times it's me trying to see how it works and and sharing my you know the things i do right and the many many things i do wrong <laughs> you're experimenting <laughs> yes exactly we're describing and discovering why it's wrong and why exactly. it's right i love you know i i always say that it's not, you know, like I made, I love making mistakes. <gasps> you know, it's not really that I like making mistakes, but it's, it's the good feeling after you've made the mistake to find out why you made it and how it, it works now. Own it. You know, yeah. sometimes like making the mistakes and you see it in the end when you finish the project and it's like, that's actually the part that I like. The yeah, most. that's no, it's not a, it's not a mistake. It's a design feature. Exactly. Happy I, accident. I meant, happy meant, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. So I'm yeah. like, oh damn! And then you're like, how did I do that again? Yeah. So I don't know. I just I like you know sharing and whatnot, and so far so far it's been so cool also to see people. Oh well, I you can do this, and you get so many ideas. It's, it's the coolest oh, yeah. thing ever. So I actually have to start getting a book and writing down yeah. all the ideas I have while doing a project. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I need to stop and start a new one just to remember what I wanted to do. Hmm. So yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you want to know what I'm up to, follow me on YouTube. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I am going to ask you the next thing too. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a crap load of stinging nettles. How's that going? How is the, how is the nettle project going? Well, actually, it's kind of, you know, you know, it's just it, we've stopped for a little while uh, because, um, well, first of all, obviously, Mona, Mia, they're not here right now. Uh, so I need to continue with the last batch that we had, which was gigantic and we didn't have time to do anything and then i started doing the leg wraps which has taken my whole life away because oh, it's right they were so wraps, much yeah. work so yeah. they were way more work than i thought they would be actually so um yeah but finally i finished them yay I'm wearing them. you are wearing them oh check out those legs look at how tiny god you you wove them really tight oh yes i did that is like 10 times tighter than this dress. <laughs> so, 
awesome. The weave. I mean, I can see the weave in mine, but mm. yours, I think we'd need like a new lens. Holy crap. No, that's got to be a better way of seeing that. <laughs> look at how tiny that weaving is. And then look at how tiny the stitches are. <laughs> Apparently, I like tiny stitches. I think you were supposed stuff. to be a <laughs> munchkin. <laughs> she's supposed to be a little munchkin. So, uh, but finally they're done, so I can uh, yeah. focus on other projects. Well, they look nice and warm, but good job. Oh, yeah. I, I am a bit warm today. Not too bad, actually. I it was worth I, it. I, no, but I, I was actually, I was thinking, I, well, I wanted to to, to like, um, wear the leg wrap so I could show them. Yeah. Know, because I, I'm so proud. I'm <laughs> glad you <laughs> did. I didn't see those yet. But, um... But um, I, I thought it was going to be like very hot and very, very warm because it's very hot today. And uh, no, it's been quite fine, actually. No, right now it's perfect, but it was hot in the sun. But, yeah. Yeah, but I've never been. I've no, never you weren't in the, the sun. sun no, you're a vampire. I am. We have to wait till the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. And it did. Why do you think I moved to Goodwang? Wait, where's the sun? <laughs> I don't get a lot. There, the sun went down. So it's okay. She won't go into a, She won't burst into a ball of flames just yet. Okay. Uh, Mona says nice leg wraps, and Charlotte says Viking strump <laughs> support hose for Vikings. And uh, I had a question for Anne when it came to fiber, and I forgot. Oh no, come on, what was it? That's a bad word in Norwegian. Don't say it. It was another one. It wasn't to do with metal needles. It was more to do with um, screw it. I'll come back to it. We have to have something. Stay tuned <laughs> to, be for, to be continued on our next episode. What, did, what was Karen going to ask Anne? Meanwhile, I think Anne's on the other side of the screen going, oh, please don't remember. Please don't remember. Please don't remember. <laughs> I was going to make her get out her you know, paperwork and everything and try to find it all her research. Yay. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I remembered. I'm so sorry. Julie Johnson said the felting dive Viking ship is to die for. Thank you. It's not done, but yay. Um, felting in the Viking age, from what I understand... I have nothing to base this on, by the way, but I've heard they could felt they could find felted things before and after the Viking Age, but for somehow during the Viking Age they forgot how to felt things. Hmm. I'm assuming just leaving your socks out or just I don't know wearing them might cause felting, but the needle felting technique I'm assuming that has absolutely nothing to do with the Viking Age. I might have committed a cardinal sin doing that. I didn't do that in front of the tourists really though. Yeah, no, at least that's what I've heard too, that they found it before and after, but not during. Mm. If you don't know, I forgot to scream, that's what she said, wrote Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh... okay, I have to, actually, I don't really have to hold this thing out, um, but the needle, that I'll show. Da -da. Are you excited? No. This is not very Viking. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. It is like, I don't know if you can see it in there. There's a bunch of needles in there, and there could be even more. But this is for using big areas. But if you're going to do um, painting with wool, I like to call it, because it kind of looks like you painted with wool, then you need one of the needles. This will be hard to see. The needle is barbed. There's different sizes of these. It's also like knives anyway. So, oh my God, I got to clean my fingernails. So you... <laughs> Barbara Streisand. <laughs> now you don't want to stick your finger with this. Okay, but anyway, you'd stab the wool up and down. And there's no way to show that. If I do it on my... There we go. Up and down on the wool. And that's what you're doing over and over again. So if you got a lot of rage, it's a good one. If you stab your finger on accident, you will be swearing in new languages. Let's be honest. Any craft is good for rage. Oh, yeah. Needle by me. Mm -hmm. uh, weaving. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It's very good. Fishing. We. I went fishing this week oh, again. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, You've yep. been active. On I have been yours. active. I went fishing. I was not wearing. Like, oh, look at all the ants hiding underneath Anders' sweater. Oh. Mm -hmm. If he itches, we won't know why. <laughs> Imagine that. I didn't even move it. I just left he, it there. <laughs> he's an ant in an ant colony. He is an ant in an ant colony. Has anybody joined that Facebook group? Uh, we are all just pretending to be ants in an ant colony. Honors, middle of Corona. Look at this new group I have, Karen. He sends me an invite. I'm like, 
a group where we pretend to be ants in an ant colony. Yep. Or we all pretend to be ants in an ant colony or something. It had like 700,000 members in it. Like, what the hell? 700,000 people. And I'm looking at this and it's just like work, work, work. <laughs> That's all it is. Okay. So I joined the damn group. It is over 2 million now. Yep. I'm very happy I never joined. And, all the, and, and it is, it's kind of hypnotically stupid because like somebody posts a picture up and it's like a big sucker on there and it says, please help. What do I do? And then someone writes lift. So if you write lift and like a million other people write lift, <laughs> work, eat, <laughs> slurp. Oh God. And I found out in like, well, 37 posts later that, oh, I see why they have a group now. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I was addicted. It is like, um, it's kind of therapeutic. We're all sitting there in Corona being ants in an ant colony in Corona, not in Corona, in lockdown. That was uh, lockdown times anyway. Uh, yeah, Julie Miners is here, by the way. Uh, she said she's heard of that group, but are you in it? Virginia wouldn't join it. No, I I got offered. To she's be, not a very good join. worker, aunt. I, I'm not an aunt. She's not a follower. She's yeah. a queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there would, have, there would be queens in that group, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Anne going, la, la, la. Yeah, so there was my question for you. She said, fulling is different than felting, and fulling happens to be happens to a pre-made woven or uh, I got the mouse over thing happens to a pre-made woven, woven or looped fabric and felting is straight from the fiber needle felting is a more recent technique than wet felting that's what I was thinking too mm. yeah fulling would be like if you uh, made mittens too big and you wanted to or not too big but you just wanted to make them more waterproof mm. uh, more vampire bat <laughs> I have experiences with bats, so there's a story here. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so <laughs> I um. Oh god, this is a very you started one. it. You started it. Oh, actually, no, Robin started it. Um, no. Um, what? Well, actually, I was. You know, I went to Catholic school, blah blah blah, and one day I was in the mass because mm. that's what you do in Catholic school, uh, middle of the summer, mm. and suddenly um, I feel something on my head, <laughs> so I was like, hmm. And I'm very happy, even today, that I never went to touch it, which is like the instinctive reaction. Yeah. I did this. And then suddenly I see a bat falling. Oh, my God. <laughs> How many people were in the pew with you? Well, uh, there were the people the, in the, the pew the, front the, of you. The whole, the whole chapel was full. And I never screamed. I just looked at it. And then I told my parents, they, they grabbed the bat, they put it outside, and that was it. Nobody noticed, actually. That's too proper. I was expecting more drama from a Spanish family in a Catholic church. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, you know, I do very well with the, this kind of situation. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, but wait a minute. Oh? We, Did we... you say bat, wait a minute? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it. We reacted pretty, pretty normally. But actually, one of my teachers uh, has phobia to oh. bats. So he saw the bat. <laughs> <laughs> and he ran across the chapel, like literally across it, like. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny, though. <laughs> well, that would have been good to see. Did they stop service or did they just keep? No, praying? no, no. And nobody noticed, so they didn't stop. Ah. Yeah. Uh, Marie Rota felted masks, Viking age. Ah, I didn't know about that. Uh, Julie, I have to check the other. I know Carl wants to make a mask anyway, but not a silver because it would be a, a weapon. What mask? What mask? Uh, no, she wrote, um, felted masks, Viking oh, age. Yeah, I think we have a project. If we ever happen to have another lockdown, we have a lot of wool. Oh, yeah, we got this. Masks. No, 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 no. I know what she's thinking. Felted mask, space mask, Viking yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mask. Good idea. That'd be one hell of a filter. It might stink, though. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wash the wool more. And I don't know how filter, how good of a filter. Well, you might be. have to put a real filter behind it. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that. Be kind of fun. I do have the drum carter, which is also not Viking age. Hmm. The things we do after six o'clock. That's what who said? <laughs> That's what she said. That's what she said. Sabrura. 
Uh, no, really, hi to boo, both sheep's mask and a cow mask, partial. Oh, yeah, she, yeah. Cool, so no, Anne knows about this one, too. Anne and Maria know way more about needle binding than we do. I need to learn. But wasn't it felted? felted yeah, that's mask? what she said, felted mask. No, really, hi to boo, both a sheep's mask and a cow's mask. <laughs> After 6 p.m., writes Regina. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I saw Julie came in a little late. Julie Miner said um, there, she said... Uh, she there it is hello i forgot about the live stream this friday sorry i could i could put them out a little bit more than one day in advance i could but that would mean being responsible <laughs> look at there and actually not not leaving every day every week like it it goes so fast it goes so fast that's actually the reason why i didn't because uh Twoodle comes in with this new equipment she says look you've got new equipment you can test it out and everything and lose it and you can try it out tomorrow for the live for our live Okay, well, we can do that. I'm sorry, did you say tomorrow? Crap, it's Thursday. Uh, yep. This is what happens when you go fishing in the middle of the week. And uh, so there we are, uh, two Viking guys uh, fishing in the front. One's got like 200 different kind of lures with them. The other one's just invested a bunch of this and that. And, uh, and there's me and my kids on the boat. And my kids are pretty much the only ones able to hold a rod. The other ones are too busy driving and talking about where they should put the hook in maybe we should be over here should we be in this part looking at apps because that's what vikings do and then um my kid is the only one that catches a fish <laughs> it's like this no oh, it was this big and his name is gerald gerald, gerald. and he has completed the circle of life because by the time we finished taking pictures of it he didn't wiggle so much anymore mm -hmm. um so it, but it went back into the water and floated away and a seagull came and took it and then Carl started breaking out in a rendition of the circle of life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's God. hard to be a Viking fisherman. <laughs> there's Maria writes, uh, nope, there were, there were found masks, probably ceremonial full cover animal masks. Oh, oh. We have a project. Wow. I want to do an experimental Viking masks we, we need, with felting. We need pictures. We need, we need pictures. We need inspiration. We need, yeah, please send it. I want to do like a devil's face. If I put horns on it, no, no horns, <laughs> no horns. What if, what if we made a Norwegian Spelso or the old Norwegian short tail land race anyway that we have here, our sheep? What if we made one like them? So basically, we're taking the sheep and turning them into sheep. I did that with embroidery, I made sheep out of the sheep. Oh, yeah, but we could turn us into the <gasps> we could be a sheep in sheep's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you. Whether happiness is contagious, says Julia Johnson. I am so happy to see uh, because she's right. We're out of time. What are you going to do this week? <gasps> oh, yeah. Well, um, first of all, I finished the leg wrap. So a video is coming Sunday. Yay! And afterwards, I'm still not sure. I have so many projects and I need to decide which one I can do and which one of those that I can do, I want to do first. I the other way around. I want to do it all. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, it's a surprise. Surprise, surprise. Yes, again, to be continued. I, Next don't, week, I don't know what I'm know. doing this week. No, we don't know. No. So well, I'm going to finish well, actually, the Viking ship. <laughs> I will finish the Viking ship. Uh, that will actually go in. I think that will be framed. And then I'll make some, I'll start some other smaller ones because they're quick and I can put them in the shop. Hmm. Uh, Greg gave me a embroidery project. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so to I have took some pictures of it. He's going to have Loki, a symbol of Loki serpents on them. Hmm. So that's being embroidered with raw silk. But I think that his thread is so thin that I'm going to actually need more than he has. So it's going to be a multicolored serpent. Hmm. And then maybe I'll put a stitch or three in here just to say that I worked on it. Yeah. I did <laughs> put two in here in front of a tourist. No, it's like this. Well, I kind of feel stupid bringing out this big honking sweater in front of a tourist in a Viking village. And like, well, first you have to start out with, it's not historically accurate. <laughs> what was the biggest thing they ever found now bound in the Viking Age? The mitten? The mitten? Yeah, because the sock is probably smaller Small, than yeah, the mitten. So. Discuss. Okay, so we have something to work on until next week. Uh, we will say, oh, uh, Mona says they sell wool masks at farm pharmacy. At the pharmacy. Oh, oh, the um, apotheca. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, I, ooh, I would like that. Do Vikings have Halloween? No. The pagan, I think there would be pagan rituals or stuff. But wouldn't it be cool if we did have one? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would 
love to haunt the crap out of this town. Just saying. Okay, anyway, but not, not historically accurate to have Halloween. Uh, I think that is in is that Spanish. Or, I don't know. No. That's another. <laughs> and then we'll, it's, not Spanish. it's not Spanish. Is it Irish or British or? I think in Dia de los Muertos, that's it. No. Yeah, but that Dia de los Muertos and Halloween are different things as far as I know. Hmm. Well, they're keeping each other company. I can see they're answering all the questions for us. We started 25 different debates at the last minute. So thank you for playing. Yourselves. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. I think the chat is open for maybe about a minute after. Uh, if you want to see more of what we're doing, scroll up at the top where the Instagram thing are. I think it's in the edit as well. Follow her on Instagram. Thumbs up if you like us. Thumbs up if you don't, because we really don't. <laughs> 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 if you thumbs up then they'll let us keep doing this so this is good yeah, <laughs> yeah this is actually fun sure. yeah we're getting yeah. special treatment we like it they're bringing in equipment saying would you like to play yes so uh like yeah and hopefully next week we'll get it figured out where that mountain the mountains look mm. oh, it's amazing yay okay bye bye see ya and stream and stream do you want to end yes <laughs> <laughs>